the latest on what is uh, going on uh, in Ukraine with Cormac Smith. He's a former communications advisor to the foreign minister of Ukraine. Good morning to you. Julia, good morning. Well, nice thank, to see you thank, again. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I, I, I mean this very nicely. I look forward to the day when you and I don't speak on a regular basis because the war is over. and We've all moved on. But, um, you know, sadly, this is still very much uh, in the news. Um, there's still a lot of concern of those two British nationals, uh, uh, Andrew Bergshaw and Chris Parry, who were missing. Still no word on where they might be. Be concerned that they might have been taken captive. Uh, they were last seen on Friday, uh, leaving Kramer Torsk uh, for Solidar, which has now been pretty much destroyed and taken over by the Russians. Um, in terms of what you're hearing from your very good contacts in Ukraine, what are the expectations about what is most likely to have happened to these men? Look, Julia, would you allow me first to say that my heart goes out to the parents of um, Andrew and Chris, and also on a personal basis, I have nothing but the hugest admiration and respect yeah. for, you know, men like this um, who put their, themselves in danger to help the Ukrainian people. And they, they weren't fighters, you know, they were trying to help evacuate people from um, this um, horrendous war zone. Look, the um, Wagner group have claimed that they have found the body of one. They haven't said who, and they have said that they found documents of both of them on that body. Now, you know, we must remember the Wagner group is nothing more than a terrorist group. It is a proxy. They operate as a proxy for the um, Russian government. They have been they have been, they are consistently guilty of some of the most horrendous war crimes of torture, of rape, of, 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 of murder, and so forth, and not just in Ukraine, but across the African continent, where they operate in many, many countries, giving the Kremlin, obviously, um, plausible deniability. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I would have to say is there's no credibility per se in anything that these thugs would claim. But the second thing is, you know, the battle for Bakhmut, of which Solidar is a is an important part, has been described as the biggest battle on European soil since World War II. Some, some of the is, footage we have seen, of the, I mean, absolute devastation. And it is carnage. It is carnage. And it's carnage on both sides. And, you know, I, 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 I spent a long time on the phone yesterday to a very good friend in Kiev, who on a weekly basis now is telling me of former friends who have who have died on the front of sons of friends who have just died, and and and, and it's it's just it's driven home to me on a daily basis because I have friends, as you know, yeah. in in Ukraine, and I speak to them on a daily basis. So look, I mean, I've I don't want to speculate, and I don't want to go with the um, um and I. Say, certainly don't want to do and say or do anything that would cause further upset to the parents and family of these two men. Um, uh, so I won't go further what I have okay. said. It is a horrendous area. There is slaughter going on. Um, but, we don't necessarily give credibility no, to. But there are obviously the concerns are even more or more a, a grave today. Let me also talk about reports that uh, well, Russia has fired the top war commander. Well, Russia, Putin has fired uh, his uh, top commander in Ukraine um, just three months after he was installed. Um, does that give us hope that he feels that things are not going the right way? Well, I think things are going very, very badly on the ground for Putin. You know, when he brought in this guy, Sorovkin, mm. known as um, General Armageddon and an absolute butcher by um, his um, by, uh, and by reputation of what he had done in Syria and so forth. Um, you know, there was great concern, but um, clearly there is there seems to be a revolving door at the top of um, Russia's yeah. um, I mean, not, command. Not they many generals brought... seem to stay alive very long. They lost incredible number of, uh, of generals. But this is a commander at the very top level. But he was seen as someone you know, people should be very fearful of and that he did know what he was doing. Yeah, they've brought back in Gerasimov, who, of course, has been the head of the general command for many, many years. And it was the, many believe, is the architect of Russia's um, um, hybrid war. Um, strategy, which effectively is the war that um, Russia has been waging against all of us since t 2014, mm -hmm. at least. But um, I think it's an indicator that there is chaos in the Russian for, uh, in the Russian. Yeah. According to the according to the Ukrainians, they have lost nearly 113,000 killed, and if you multiply that by two or three to get the you know total number of casualties, 
Um, they are taking huge losses. Put that in context. In 10 years in Afghanistan, the Soviet Union lost 15,000 yeah. in it's, a it's year. It's just on a They've, huge it, scale, isn't it? Can I ask you, I mean, just finally, the time is very tight. Um, yeah. in, in terms of, you know, we've got the anniversary coming up on February the 24th of the invasion, the one that no, none of the experts thought was going to happen. And they, of course, also thought that Ukraine and Zelensky would roll over and be taken over within a matter of days or, even, or, or weeks. Um, where do you think we're going to be on February the 24th? Do you think there will be signs of Ukrainian victory? Because it seems to be an ongoing issue that we are giving just enough aid to keep Ukraine going, but not quite enough to allow Ukraine to win. And and Julian, I've said this to you before, my fear all along has been that there has been a fear of winning, of beating Russia in the West. And, you know, there there are signs, there are signs that we're getting over this. Jens Stoltenberg, the um, 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 the, 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 the head of NATO, said yesterday that, you know, we must now give Ukraine the heavy weapons that they need to end this. And there's great hope. We have we have now confirmed we're giving the Challenger tanks. Poland has confirmed that they are giving a number of Leopard 2 tanks. It really is now down to Schultz because the Ukrainians don't need dozens of these tanks. They need hundreds. But these tanks will be a game changer. The um, armoured personnel um, um, and fighting vehicles will be a game changer. But we also need to see the jets. The Americans have been training Ukrainians to fly F-16s for six months. We need to see the jets and we need to see the long range. That's that's going to be crucial, isn't it? Cormac Smith, I know we will speak to you again. Thank you so much for joining us, former advisor to the foreign minister of Ukraine. Let's bring in Benedict Spence, who I know always wants to talk about these these issues. Um, There is this 